It isn't voter suppression to reaffirm that activists aren't allowed to approach voters in line, especially to solicit votes with gifts. Contrary to urban legend, the Georgia law allows poll workers to provide water. Legend, urban legend, a.k.a. lie. The Georgia law expands, she italicized the word, italicizes it, voting, adding early voting on more weekends. I'm against it, by the way. I'm against all this early voting. Election Day has been rendered by the activists uh, meaningless. It's election month. And providing additional equipment and poll workers in larger precincts. Mr. Bastian, that's Delta, moralizing memo fails to cite a single one of the supposedly egregious measures in the bill that will suppress the vote, although he does stress he hears his employees' pain. Because his employees want to feel pain and believe it. The letter from the 72 executives, that's the black executives, misstates the Georgia rules, suggesting the only way to satisfy the ID requirement is with a driver's license, even though 200,000 Georgians lack a license. In fact, voters can also use a free state-issued non-driver ID, and those who lack one can fulfill the requirement with a Social Security number or even a copy of a, quote, current utility bill, bank statement, government check, or paycheck, unquote. Is that too hard? The letter suggests the Georgia playbook enacting rules less onerous than those in many blue states, as Karl Rove has noted in these pages. I read that to you last hour. Is a is a piece of ready? Is a pe- is of a piece with police dogs, poll taxes, and literacy taxes. One can only hope Merck is more rigorous when conducting pharmaceutical trials. These laws that 36 states have are of a piece with police dogs? Why aren't blacks offended by that? Witness Senator Marco Rubio's fuming tweet on Thursday calling Delta a, quote, woke corporate hypocrite, noting that the company is, quote, business partners with the Chinese Communist Party, raking in billions of dollars in a country that doesn't even have elections. Delta cares about elections like you care about the football team of Ghana. Smart executives have long understood the value of political neutrality. Corporate America is now throwing its lot in with one of the most partisan, brass-knuckle, dishonest campaigns in recent political history. It will be a long time mending fences with Republicans, if that's even possible. It's very easy not to drink Coca-Cola. It's tougher not to watch baseball. And it's tougher to avoid Delta if you're in a hub city like Minneapolis. But if you want to know how to fight, that's why I want to bring to you another piece. And It's amazing that it was actually... uh, in the Wall Street Journal. man named Dave Seminaro. Were you familiar with him before? If you were not familiar with him before, then I feel justified in not being familiar with him before. He is a former diplomat and author of Footsteps of Federer, a fan's pilgrimage across seven Swiss cantons in ten acts. Wall Street Journal article. What I wouldn't give for a shave that isn't woke. From my closet to my bathroom, my house is full of leftist brands. It's time to do something about it. Coca-Cola and Delta, a pair of Atlanta-based companies I've patronized for many years, became progressive boycott targets this month for allegedly not doing enough 
to stop Republicans in the state from passing an election security law that's been recast absurdly, a.k.a. as a lie, as a civil rights violation. The companies haven't withstood it well. In an interview Wednesday with CNBC, James Quincy, Coca-Cola's CEO and virtue signaler-in-chief, called the law unacceptable on a step backwards, but didn't explain why. They never ask. They go on left-wing media, and they never say, I would. If, if a conservative were on my show and said, well, this is whatever it is, I'd say, could you give me an example? I do that all the time. Without an example, the charge is a lie. We will return. I'm Dennis Prager. <laughs> 